let me tell you something. We've heard some deep word this week. We've heard thing like that. We've heard the process. Oh my God. Strategic instructions. We have heard planning from the heavenlies hitting the earth. The spirit of obedience in us was challenged. Then we heard a word. <laughs> oh, we heard the word. My God, we heard the word. Sister Joy coming here, past prophet. She began to Thank you. illustrate some things out of James that just spoke to me. She began to talk about the things that need to be accomplished for us to stand where God has intended us to be. Because the thing is, listen, you might have a win, but if you don't know which direction to send it, and your mind, and your mind is double, you ain't going to get double for no trouble if your trouble mind is. You're only going to get double. That's it. You're going to get double Woo. only when you do what God says and you begin to pray effectively. And when I'm going to tell you something, when you begin to talk about words, overcomingly. Yes, yes. I'm going to live overcomingly because the overcomingly one yes. is inside of me. Some of you need to add All words right. to your vocabulary. All right. Whatever you hear from God, you need to begin to add to your vocabulary. Because let me tell you something. Sometimes the words that we are familiar with have no absolute way to describe yeah. where we've been or where we're about to go. See, the thing is, is this, I know this for a fact, that if it had not been for God being wow. awesome, wow. I would not have anything wow. to say awesome was about. Yeah. God's yeah. taste to see that the Lord is good. See, the thing is, is once you tasted it, yeah. you will understand that there is a difference. There is not nothing. See, listen, wonderful. I would never have had a word wonderful if it had not been for the wonderful love of Jesus. Yes. See, sometimes we just got to understand that our language is just not big enough. And God not just yes. wants to increase our territory. Yes. See, the problem is, is when we talk about territory, we look to the earth to define territory. Right. We look to territory. But can I tell you something? God wants to expand this territory. God said it's time for the, this space right here. The six-inch space between the left ear and the right ear. That heaven needs to be open and that territory needs to be expanded. That means that what you used to know is not going to be good enough for where God is about to take you. God's going to teach you some new words. I know some of us has traveled to foreign countries and we pick up little bits of language. Some of us are more fluent than others. But can I tell you something? That God is getting ready to release a heavenly language that's not just tongues, that has the sound of heaven. I hear God saying there's a sound coming forth. There is a sound. See, the thing is, is let me tell you something. It was a sound. This sound system couldn't even help them. Uh -huh. yeah. And see, God challenged us not to release an artificial sound. Uh -huh. God said, do you have it when there ain't no electricity? Uh -huh. Do you have it when I send you to Africa and you're in the middle of a hut? Yeah. And you have to go up into a village God. and there is 25 or 30 people and you can't even see all that until Ooh. you begin to walk. See, that's day one, 25 to 30. Yeah. But then it comes out that there is healing in the camp. Yeah. That there is goodness in the, in the Lord. It's just yeah. stepped into the ground. All of a sudden, this word goes out. And what I love about Africa is see, they understand about the sound. See, what they have is they have drums and all they have to do to communicate one to another is begin to release a certain sound because the vibration of that sound begins to travel. Can I tell you that the frequency and the vibration to you is all up on it. You just didn't know it. If you'd have been here, I'll tell you what, some of you have been here, you've seen that, listen, I could stand up here and say, Melissa White, ditto. Uh, yeah. Joy, yeah. ditto. Yeah. No, you don't even understand. <laughs> Sister Edna, ditto. Because yeah. let me tell you something. This has been a progressive thing. Do you understand that God is getting ready to build something in yeah. you? He has got you here this weekend on the divine order. See, the thing is, you just received a blueprint. Uh -uh. See, and the foundation has been laid. You've been given the strategic plan. Hey! It's time for us to get in line with the design. It's time for us to get into the place where God can begin to say, build this way. I want it on the left. I want it on the right. I want it too high here and 17 high there. I want it 18 cubits. I want it this low. Listen, God ain't even looking for you to bring your measure to it. He said, I put one in your body. He said, listen, I want to teach you how to measure some things. I'm going to teach you how to discern my word. See, because that's what the sound will do. The sound, the sound will release a direction. Come on, don't, you know what, I'm going to tell you something. Let's go to Genesis. Come on. Come on in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and glory. Darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of the Lord moved across the face of the waters. Can I tell you today, the word was released and said, God is looking for God. 
Yeah. You understand that when the Spirit of the Lord, uh, when the Spirit of the Lord moved across the face of the waters, there was a face there. He was looking for the reflection of himself. But see, the thing about it is, is what he began to do was release. And as the Spirit began to move, oh, shut that up. So I can stay right there. And the Spirit moved. See, God, I gotta tell you something. When God begins to move in your face, something. God, when he began to build, he began to build with someone that looked like him in mind. Yeah, that's right. See, that's the thing. That's right. So as he began to lay something out, listen, he doesn't form anything first unless he puts an environment for it to prosper into. Right. See, when he moved across the face of the waters, he said, this looks like a good place for life. Yeah. So all of a sudden, it became a God thing, not just a good thing. Yeah. But God thing said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, and that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Can I tell you what I think is amazing? That if you go down to day four, it wasn't until day four that the sun and the moon were put into place. Yes. Right. See, but day one, God was already on the scene. Can I tell you, you might not have anything regulating your time yet. But yeah. God is just showing up in the middle of every dark situation. Yes. And he's looking for a reflection of himself. Woo. And he's getting ready to produce an environment that those sounds of God will be produced through. There's coming a sound. <laughs> oh, there's coming a sound. <laughs> See, here's what I love. Go with me down. Verse, I'm going to just tell you, day six, God pulled some animals out and the fish and everything that came forth. He talked out of it. And he talked about it to come out of the seas. And here's what I want to tell you. Is in the middle of every creation, he began to look and say it's good. Yes, yeah. After everything that he did. Yeah. He looked at it and said it was good. Can I tell you, when he looks at you, what he has created in you, he says it's good. You say, well, I ain't been acting good. God ain't looking at how you've been acting. Yeah, right. God ain't worried about what has happened, what you're currently doing. God's looking into your potential. Yeah. Yeah. See, the thing about it is, is God placed potential down inside of you. Yeah. See, when I come from my mother's womb, I had a gift of a voice. But guess what? That voice didn't develop when I was first born, but it did come with a sound. Yeah. See, that first sound hat was a cry. It didn't develop into language until the cry was shaped. Uh, see, it come forth with a sound. But see, for me to come out with a cry, my mother made sounds. See, I come from the old school where you just had to grin and bear it. And nobody grinned much at all. I did three natural. And let me tell you something. There was a sound that came before the cry. There was a sound that came before the cry. They knew where I was in that hospital. Because there was a sound that had to come forth to bring forth. That's right. See, sometimes you don't understand that the sound that you're making today will bring forth something tomorrow. Yeah. The sound that you release today is about Woo. to bring something forth yeah. that you've never had come before. On. It's something that you've never seen before. Yes. It's about to see that's what you don't understand is the sound that you release is about to bring forth something that's gonna cry all on its own. Yes, God. There is a sound, there is a sound. Yeah. See down in verse 28, it says. Well, let's go back to 27, and, and well, no, we're going to have to go back to 26, because you know what? We're going to do the whole thing. And God said, let us make men in orange. God told me not parts or pieces, and I refused to dumb down the gospel. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm going to tell you something. The problem is, is there's nothing wrong with message Bibles and amplified Bibles. Because listen, I'm about words. Yeah. And let me tell you something. You need to get you parallel Bibles, and you need to study to show That's that right. self approved yeah. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because here's yeah. what the deal is. We yes. learn to work it, but because the work, the work, because the word uh -huh. works. Yeah. And Woo here's the thing, that if you don't understand what you're called to work, how can you work it? Yes, that's the truth. The problem is, is we want the condensed version. We've got so used to seeing computers for dummies. Come on, let's just tell it. We want everything for dummies. Guess what? I saw the book, the Bible for dummies. No, no, no. That needs to just fall off. 
Let me tell you something. We don't need no cliff notes. You don't need no short stories. You need the actual sharp sword word of God that is sharper than any two-edged sword that will go forth into the middle of a thing, even down to the root and the marrow and separate some things. See, that's what it's all about. It's about taking the sword, placing it in the right position so that that which God is directing you to do, that you will discern what you need. Because if all you need is the marrow and you don't need the bone, then why would you be hauling around a dry old dead bone when all you need is the marrow? Put the sword in and pull out what God tells you to pull out. Yes. So you don't understand.